How's everybody doing? I'm going to do another tutorial, and this one's on Open WRT, configuring it to work with your modem. Now, there's two ways you could do this. Uh, one way is, is, is a pretty good way. And then another way is, is, is I don't really think is that good of a way. But let's, let's, let's go this way and I'll explain it to you as uh, we'll go. Uh, let me get bring up my other browser. I like it a little bit better. Alright. I'm pretty sure all y'all know the address is 192.168.1.1. Okay, now go network. Go and delete the this WAN, but don't delete the other WAN, the Ethernet 0 0.2 WAN. You need to hang on to it. Uh, go ahead and go to edit, and just you know leave it static address. Put this right here, your IPv4 address, anything you want it. And you just pretty much, you ain't got to do it. This time, you're going to leave your DHCP server up and running. Don't disable it. You, you're, 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 this time, I'm going to config it, and we're going to be behind the WAN. So we'll need the DHCP server to hand out IPs to all the clients because we're not going to get it from the main router we're going to get it from the uh, router to, to do the uh, open WRT router all right we're going to leave that like it is well you did this right here's a starting address it starts at 100 and go up so anything below that's called out of range and the limits you know 150 that's only going to give you 50 IPs and uh, 12 hour limit I usually give it an extra zero for about 120 hours save and apply alright let's go ahead and turn on the Wi-Fi enable Wi-Fi turn it on okay it's up go to edit alright set the Wi-Fi to whatever channel you want I'll choose eight and uh, I'm gonna jack the power down to about 2258 milliwatt and let's go ahead and leave it you know the ESSID to open WRT and leave it access point network and leave it land and uh, hit save and apply All right, right here beside the general tab on interface configuration is a tab called wireless security. This is where you put your security in. Right now it says no encryption. It's got a drop down window where you can uh, pick what encryption you want. It's, you know, WPA, WPA2, WPA mixed. Uh, <coughs> you pick one and this is where you put the wireless key. And I'm just going to leave it on no encryption, save and apply. Okay, let me uh, check something right quick. I got the DHCP server on. Let's see what kind of address. Okay, this is the address <coughs> that this router has gave this computer. Uh, the the uh, DHCP server is 192.168.1.1. That's the address we'll be logging into it to. Default gateway, same thing. <clears throat> and it gave it this address, 192.168.1.159. That's what it gave <clears throat> this uh, DHCP server has gave to this computer. All right. Okay, let's keep going. Now let's go over here. To status. All right. Let me 
plug the WAN port up and let's see what happens. Okay, now, as you can see, the IPv4 WAN status, it gave it, this is the main router right here, this is, and it gave the WAN port an IP of 192.168.0.249, and that's all it's going to give a WAN port is an IP except for internet access. Uh, when the DHCP server on the main router, when the time's up, it's going to give it another IP, but it's just going to give it to the WAN port. It ain't going to give it to nobody else. It's just going to hand it out to the WAN port. The subnet mask, and this right here is the default gateway, 192.168.02, and that's the IP for the main router. And that's pretty much it, folks. Probably gonna have to reboot it. Let's see if I got internet access down. There it is. I got internet. <clears throat> but this is like a a bad way to get it set up. It'll work like this. Um, no problem. It'll work like this. But what it is, you got everything double. You got a double firewall. You got a double NAT. You got a double uh, quality of service, and port forwarding is just mind-boggling. If you want to forward some ports, you're going to have to do it on both the main router and this router. It is sort of mind-boggling. Also, with a double NAT and double firewall, it will slow down the internet some. It'll work okay. If it doesn't bother you none, you, you, can, you, know, you can run it like that. But, you know, it has some, uh, it, you, you, you run into some problems when you do some port forwarding, you know. I ain't never got it figured out, you know, running it like this. But you can, you can run it like this. And it'll work okay perfectly. And right now, my main router is handing out IP2 to the WAN port. And I'm running off the DHCP server that's in the open WRT router. Let's check out what the IP is. Okay, the IP is still the same. It's one two one six dot one dot one fifty nine. Okay, let's log back into this router. Now there's another way of doing it, and this is the way I'm doing the main router in the house. Is, but what it is you all the modems out there you could bridge some of them it's like these little Motorola's 2210-22 1022s people call them hot boxes because they get so hot and TP links and D links <clears throat> and a few other companies they make these simple modems where you can bridge them straight through. You can bridge the modem where you can get the signal from the ISP and it'll go right straight through that modem and it'll hand it off to your router. And your router can do everything. Instead of doubling everything, you could just bridge the modem and let the router take care of everything. And I'm going to show you right quick how to do that. Go to network and right here this WAN port you know we got our we got our lens and everything taken care of that's working good and also we're still going to be using the DHCP server we're still behind the WAN okay edit there's this drop down window right here right now we got the win uh, the WAN set up as a DHCP client it receives uh, an IP from the main modem or main router I got handing out the IPs. What you do is all you got to do is hit the drop down window and right here it is. It's called PPOE. Click on the PPOE and then click to switch the protocol. And if you ever logged in, if you got a DSL modem, if you ever 
been into the GUI of your modem, you would have to uh, put in your user name, which more than likely it's your email address, and then you got a password. You put you put your 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 username in this one right here, and then you got a password, and you put your password in right there. You know whatever your password is. And so you got the advanced settings. Physical settings, firewall, okay. That looks good. Looks good. Okay, I'm gonna put in, you know, HH, you know, at you know uh, JK dot See, uh, you know, just right here, because right now I don't, I don't have a modem bridge to do this. I'm just showing how you do it, and the password is, you know, blah 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 blah. Uh, hit, click apply and save. Okay, and now everything's switched over. Yep, everything is switched over. To PP, you now your WAN is set up to PP. O E win. But your modem has got to be bridged. If you got your modem bridged and everything's set up with it and you can bridge now some modems you can't you can you can get them like a partial bridge. Uh if you if 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 it's set up where you can do a true bridge, and then that's what it'll do. It'll just pass a signal right through it to your router to and then if you got this set up with PPOE then it'd take care of it. Then everything's not double. Every then you could do better port forwarding and the QoS, you know, through Open WRT. But the other way to why I said it, it'll work, but everything's doubled. Uh, you got double NAT, double QoS. You know, you got double firewall and uh, port forwarding. You know, you, you go things. You know, how in the heck I'm going to set up port forwarding when it's doubled? You know, you got to double do it, and it could be sort of confusing. That's the main reason you do, you do it is is like that. And uh, yep, yep. All right, that's pretty much about it. That's pretty much about it. Okay, folks, that's that's it on this, and I hope y'all learned. You know, it's 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 open WRT is not that hard, and uh, you know, just it's not that hard to learn. You know, once once you get used to it, it's like any anything else. You know, you, once you get the hang of it, you'll like it more and more and more. I have. The more I use uh, open WRT, the more I enjoy working it. And that's pretty much about. Uh, Pretty much about it. Hope y'all learned something. And have a great day. And bye-bye.